Resurrection Sunday. Woo! I was uh, actually thinking of coming out the door of the tomb, but then I thought, no, I'm not Jesus, so I thought that's probably not a good idea. You know, he's risen, and uh, some 2,000 years ago, since Jesus came out of the tomb alive, and guess what? He's still alive. Amen. And so we re we rejoice, and it's great to serve a risen Savior, isn't it? He went to the cross, but he didn't stay there. He didn't stay in the tomb. So welcome if this is your first Sunday here. We're just so happy you, you decided to choose this place and worship today. If you've been here for many weeks, welcome. And if you've been here for many years, welcome. So uh, we just are glad you're all here for, for uh, Easter Sunday service. And God has been good to us. And we, we thank you for that. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we uh, want to thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord, that your son did not stay in the grave, but he rose from the dead. Lord, what a hope we have that someday we shall be with you forever and ever. And God, we just pray, Lord, that you would preside over this service. Every song that's sung, every word that's spoken, Lord, may it honor and bless your name. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
get to the Reader's Theater. Again, this is from John 20. Now, we know on Friday, Jesus Christ was crucified, died, and laid in a tomb. But that was Friday. Today is Sunday. Oh, you can give a shout. For early... On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene. Very early Sunday morning and still dark. Mary was weeping. She went to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. The stone had been removed. The door of the tomb was gaping open. The tomb had been disturbed. She was amazed and horrified. She came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved. She ran out of the garden. She ran into the city. She ran up the street. After all that running, she came to the house where Peter and John were staying. She took a moment to catch her breath. And as they surrounded her, she said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. The body's been stolen. It's gone. Where could it be? So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. They ran. 
They ran as fast as they could. But John outran Peter. Just looked in. He leaned into the tomb to see where the body had been. He saw where the strips of linen wrappings were lying on the cold slab. The body was gone. But the wrappings were left where they had been. Then all of a sudden, Simon Peter, who had been behind him, arrived, pushed past John, and went into the tomb. Peter burst into the tomb. There was no stopping him. When Peter saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. Yes, the cloth that had been around Jesus' head. This cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Separate from the rest of the wrappings, it was neatly folded by itself. Finally, the other disciple, John, who had reached the tomb first, they both went inside together. And they saw and they believed. But they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. They believed. Now, did they believe because the tomb was empty? No. Did they believe because of angels? No. They believed because of the grave wrappings. Yes. The position of the grave wrappings convinced them that, that this was no grave robbery. No hurry taking of the body sorry, for um, some, um, some unknown reason. They gave wrappings. The grave wrappings were intact. They were still coiled where the body had been. Peter believed. And John believed. And they were amazed. The disciples went back to their homes together. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. She wept. She shed tears of grief, tears of sorrow, tears of unbelief. And as she wept, she bent over to the tomb to bend inside. And as she was looking, Two angels appeared. These angels had been where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. And they asked her, they said, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. Someone has stolen his body. Someone has taken him away. At this moment, she turned around and Jesus was standing there. But she did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? She didn't recognize him at all. Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I'll get him. Tell me, please tell me and I'll get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary. She turned toward him and cried out, Rabbi, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Then Mary Magdalene went to the disciples. Did she run this time? Did she walk? Did she hurry, or did she take her time thinking over the wonder of this wonderful news? Then Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he has said these things to her. I have seen the Lord. Of all the disciples, of all his followers of note and renown. Mary Magdalene received the blessing. To be the very first. To say the words. I have seen him. I have seen Jesus. Then that same day at evening, before the first day of the week when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Woo! So Jesus said to them, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Truly, Jesus did this and many other signs in the presence of his disciples that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, we may have life in his name. And together we can say, we, we have, have seen Jesus, Jesus and, and he, he is, is arisen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. And because there was great gladness and great joy, they were feeling very happy. And so right now the disciples and the angels would like to sing a song. Give us one moment to get assembled, please.
I want to just uh, share from the Word of God a little bit this morning from John 20, as uh, Pastor Scott mentioned. Uh, I want to look at six different responses to the resurrection, that being of Mary Magdalene, <coughs> John, Peter, Mary again at the tomb, and Thomas. And uh, so we're going to look at that. There's only five up there, but I'll give you the sixth one at the end. It's going to be the surprise visitor to the tomb. So you want to keep around for that, right? Mary Magdalene, you know, when she came to the tomb, she saw that the stone was rolled away. And as was so vividly brought to us, it was before daybreak. It was still dark out. And what does she tell the disciples? She tells the disciples, they've taken away my Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've laid him. We've They've taken. That was her explanation. You know, when Mary came to the tomb, she had a natural explanation because all she could see was the empty tomb. She couldn't see the Lord. She didn't know much of the details, but the tomb was empty. She knew that it had been disturbed. Her natural response was that somebody must have taken it. She totally believed that. She went back to the disciples. She said, somebody has taken our Lord. And uh, that was her response. You know, um, it, there, sometimes you think there's a natural explanation to the things of God, but she truly believed the natural because she had never truly had her eyes open to believe the supernatural power of God. And I just want to encourage you here this morning, if you're here today and maybe you got some questions about God, it's okay. You know, it might seem like there's natural explanations to all the miracles in the Bible, but you know, God's got you on a journey. And like Mary, you might not know perfect truth, but as long as you're seeking, one thing I do know is that is you're going to find him. Amen. Then we saw John. John, as you saw, outran Peter. I kind of like John because when I was younger, I still like to run fast, but I, I'm a little bit worried about tripping over my feet these days. But, you know, I used to run really fast. So I can identify with John. He got to the tomb First of all, he outran Peter. He got there, but he was hesitant to enter in. Anybody here know about God, but you're just kind of hesitant? I'm not sure if I really want to enter in. <laughs> That's John. And John, he ran faster than Peter, but he was a little timid. He stooped down, he, he looked in, and he saw the linen clothes lying there all folded up, but he didn't enter. Then Peter comes along, as we saw, brushes him aside. The third one, he's, he's the man that if given a chance, he's going to check it out, and he's going to check it out thoroughly. Maybe you're like that. You've heard about the power of God. you heard about what God can do, and you're like, Peter, I've heard God is good. I'm going to be there, right? And whatever's happening, I want to check it out. I want to find out what's going on. That's Peter. You know, it's good to be bold like Peter. It's good to check things out like Peter. It's even good to be inquisitive like Peter. So in verse 7 of chapter 20, it says, there was a handkerchief that had been around his head, and it was not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together by its, uh, in a place by itself. And uh, so here Peter saw the napkin. Then John follows him in. And as was displayed for us this morning, they both believed. They believed what? It says they didn't yet know the scripture, but that he was going to rise from the dead. But I think that they believed that something supernatural had happened. That's kind of like Peter. He knew something took place. He didn't know what it was, but he said, I, I'm going to check this out. I want to know what's going on here. You know, salvation... Um, is an instantaneous thing, but the process of believing is often stretched over time with God revealing himself in different various ways in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I think that in each of us, we could say there's been different crossroad points in our life. Maybe one of those points is even today, I don't know. But there's times when God just places us in a particular place where we come almost like face to face with real truth and God gives us an opportunity to respond. Well, the next scene is Mary. She's back at the tomb, and uh, she's weeping. Her sense of loss is bigger than anything else in her life. And I think, man, I've been there. We've all been there. 
where the circumstances of life just kind of cause us either to, to grieve or to sorrow or, or maybe things that the life, life has dished out to us. We say, well, why has that happened? And all we can see is what's in front of us. And that's kind of like Mary. All she could think about was her loss. And it's an interesting thing that earlier when she went to talk to the disciples, she said this. She said, they have taken our Lord and we don't know what they have done with him. She says basically the same thing again to who she thought was the gardener, but she makes it personal. She says, I do not know where they have laid him because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they've laid him. Before it was, they have taken him away and we don't know what took place. Now she said, they have taken away my Lord. Interesting. She turns around and there standing is Jesus. She doesn't recognize Jesus. I kind of looked at that a couple of times when I read that. And I wondered this. I wonder what our resurrected body is going to be like. If our resurrected body is going to be, be like Jesus, what was his body like? in that his own disciples didn't recognize him at first. There are two times that his disciples didn't recognize him. First of all was Mary at the tomb. The other one was on the road to Emmaus when two of the disciples were walking along with him. And they didn't recognize, they're walking along, talking, and he's sharing the scriptures with him, with them. And they get to their destination, Emmaus, and then Jesus takes a loaf of bread and breaks it. And the Bible says that their eyes were opened and they saw that it was Jesus. I'm not quite sure what our resurrected bodies are going to look like, but I do know that with Jesus' body, there was some things about him that were the same. Maybe it was in his voice with Mary. Maybe it was with the breaking of bread with the other disciples. But one of the things that he kept was the nail, the nail prints in his hand and in his side. You see, Thomas wasn't... He's the next one. Maybe you identify with Thomas. He's, he's the doubter. We call him Doubting Thomas. And uh, he wasn't there the first time Jesus appeared. And note that Jesus, when he appeared, they were in a room that was locked and the door was shut and locked. No one could enter. And the Bible says that Jesus appeared. <laughs> kind of like that about the resurrected body. And I, I, I guess we'll, maybe without wings, we'll be able, we won't, We'll defy gravity. I, I don't know. But I know one thing is going to be good. And our bodies are going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says. We will have a resurrected body. And yet we will be known. Interesting. Where was I? <laughs> oh, yeah, Thomas. Thomas. Let's go back to Mary just for a second. She turned and, as Jesus just said one word, Mary. And she knew by the love in his voice, that it was him. She turned around and said, Rab Rabboni, which is interpreted master or teacher. And Jesus said, Quit, don't, don't cling to me. The literal, literal meaning of that verse is, keep, don't keep on clinging to me because I haven't ascended to the Father yet. But go tell them, I'm ascending to the Father and your Father and to my God and your God. She believes, she understands. Finally, she's got to the place no, there can be no natural explanation for this because this man that I see is Jesus. And she sees the nail prints. She knows that he is Rabboni. She is master, or he is master and Lord. Then the same day, after the first day of the week, Jesus appears to the disciples and uh, says, peace be with you. And then, uh, oh, I, was, I was talking about Jesus with the nail prints in his hands. It says here in Revelation 5.11 that there is the 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands that are worshiping Jesus, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain. So I believe that those nail prints, Jesus has chosen to keep those, and they will see the nail prints in his hands even throughout eternity. We will see that. So Thomas, as I said, missed being there. And he said, well, unless I see, I'm, I'm not going to believe. Eight days later, 
Thomas is with the disciples, same, perhaps the same room. It's, it's a room that's shut, the door was shut, locked. And Jesus again appears right in the midst of them. And uh, he says, peace be with you. And then he looks at Thomas, knowing already that Thomas was doubting and said, I want proof. He says, Thomas, reach your hand over here. Touch my hand. See that those scars are real. Put your fingers in my side. See that the wounds that I have are real. He says, don't be unbelieving, but believing. And I like what Thomas said to him. We say it's doubting Thomas. But when he saw, what did he say? He said, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Well, you can probably identify with one of those five in the responses that they had to the resurrection. Maybe you're like John, you like to run quickly to something. Maybe you're like Peter, you like to check it out thoroughly. Maybe you're like Thomas, you have some doubts and you say, unless I see it for myself, I'm not going to believe. Or maybe you're like Mary, grieving over something. But when Jesus appears, all of them believed. They all found their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, who's the sixth one? For that, we turn to the end of the chapter in John chapter 20. Maybe we'll start at verse 30. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Now, verse 31, because the sixth person is us, you, me. But these are written that you may believe. Everybody say you. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, close off with an illustration here. And uh, first of all, I, I would like a volunteer amongst the kids or teens. Anybody? Want to volunteer? I need a, somebody really brave. Okay. Really brave? Daly, I saw your hand. Are you really brave? Are you okay if we blindfold you? Yeah? Come on up over here. I'm going to take you all the way over here. And Daly, we're going to blindfold you, okay? Turn around. We'll tie this bag. And you tell me once I'm done here. No, I didn't. <laughs> Oh, doesn't. Well, maybe we'll just do like that. Can you see? Nope. How many fingers do I got? I don't, know. don't know. Good. That's good. Okay. Now I'm going to just kind of turn you around, turning you around. Keep turning, keep turning. You're not dizzy yet, right? Nope. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. I want everybody to be really quiet now. Okay. All you guys out there, be quiet. Yeah. Okay. So you don't know which direction. Yeah, I'm playing a little tricks. Just stand there just for a minute, okay? And. Uh, we're just going to move a few things here, and yeah, something like that. Yeah, we'll just move that. Okay, now here's where, uh, here's where everybody in, in the audience is going to uh, help you, and they're going to tell you whether to turn right or turn left. Maybe I can get some of the kids. You want to come up, up the front so you can help her? To, uh, and, and no tricking her, okay? I know it's April 1st, but no tricking her, all right? And uh, so you can just sit on the front. Okay. She's going to try to go to the other side of the stage, and she's going to she's gonna have to avoid some of those obstacles that I put out there for her, okay? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you're going to tell her whether she needs to turn around or whether she go right or left, okay? So first of all, we're all going to say, okay, Dahlia... Turn around, okay. Okay, stop. Okay.
Okay, now we're going to ask you to do something that uh, is going to be very, you're going to have to really trust me on this, okay? Okay, so I just want you to put your hands out like this, okay? And I want you to sit down. Whoa! Okay, we're going to un unblindfold you. Maybe. Well, I put that. Are you okay? Yeah. Well, I put that on tight. Well, you're you're a brave soul. So I've got something for you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank I, and I, and I want you to stay up here at the front. Okay. You do that. Thanks, Ed. So, uh, who did she remind you of in our Bible story? Anybody? Was it Mary, John, Peter, Thomas? Was she kind of... Who, who was the brave one, do you figure? Peter. Peter? I think you're right. I think it was Peter. Peter was the first one in the tomb, right? Had Peter seen Jesus? But yet he wanted to check it out, didn't he? He was willing to try. He was willing to follow. And, and uh, now I wonder, if would there be anybody... John was actually the first one to the tomb. Peter kind of was one of the ones that followed. Is there anybody else that would say, you know, I, I could be like Peter. Anybody else would like to follow what she did? You guys? Any volunteers that would like to follow? Back there, Alithia, come on up. You know what? You don't even have to do what she did. But because, because you were willing to follow... You are going to get a prize for that. Just, you know, I, want, I need you to stay up here. I need you to stay up here. You get to join the chocolate bar club. Okay? I was Peter. You were Peter. Well, I didn't see your hand up. I was Peter. So I want to know, is there, is there anybody like Mary that you think, well, I sure would like to get that chocolate bar, but... You know, I, I'm kind of swallowed up in my own fear of going up to the front. Anybody timid? <laughs> you, did you put your hand up? You've already got some. Did you put your hand up? You're a little timid? Come here. Come on up here. Yeah. That, that was, that's not always the easiest, is it? Especially when you're playing Jesus, the part of Jesus. It, it takes a little bit of stretching to get out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you did really well, by the way. Thank you. So come on over. Come on over. Uh oh, oh, uh oh. All right. There you go. Okay, join the chocolate bar club here. Now, is there any Thomases in the group? Anybody that, you know, if there's three chocolate bars, I could be out of them. I might not have any more. Okay. Yeah. Kinsley. <laughs> well, I, I'd have to give it to your mom or brother or something, I think, just to make sure. So, t so t sometimes, are there things... I see your hand up. Come on, stand up. Come on. You're like Thomas. Have you, is there anything that you ever doubt and wonder about? I wonder if my hamster will ever stop chewing his foot. If your hamster is ever going to stop chewing his foot. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, because we want them to live, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Uh, I think in all of our lives, come with me. I know you're, let's, let's see. Maybe you were doubting whether ahead had any more. Yeah. Whoa, I still got one, one left there. Okay. You don't have one, you have like. So, you see that sometimes we say, well, you got to go a certain way to find Jesus. But you see how Mary went, and John went, and Peter went, and Thomas, even in his doubting, he st at the end, he still believed. The Bible tells us that Thomas actually, well, I shouldn't say, the Bible tells us Thomas believed, but tradition tells us that Thomas became a missionary. He went to faraway lands. And the thing is, there's a different path for people to come and believe in. But the important thing is that you come and that you believe. The important thing is not how you come to that place of faith, but the important thing is that you come to that place of faith. Yeah. So I'm going to, any of the kids that want, there you go. Thank you. 
You can eat them, by the way. Let's all stand together, okay? Father, I thank you that you show us in our, in our road of life, Lord, and the ups and downs and the curves and the, the doubts that we have sometimes, Lord, and, and the things, Lord, that seem to be so difficult for us that you are always there. And in many ways, Lord, you reveal yourself to us. So I pray on this Resurrection Sunday that you will reveal yourself to every hungry heart in this place. And Father, if there's anybody here that does not know you as Savior and Lord, we just ask, Lord, that today would be the day that they would pray the prayer. And if you want to pray that with me right now, just feel free to do that. Dear God, come into my life. I receive you into my heart, my spirit. I want to live for you. I want to walk with you. And I want to just understand that you are present with me always. I thank you that you died on the cross, and I thank you that you rose from the dead. And I thank you that you're coming for me again, and I can live with you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You prayed that prayer for the first time today. I want you to invite, to, invite you to let me know or somebody else in the church here. That would be awesome for you to testify about that. Amen. Go with God. Have a great day. And thanks for coming out.